Already week four of Football Friday, we've got a conference clash. The Concrete Palace in Hershey. Are the Lord Offing Falcons still flying high? And it's a big night at Elko High School. The school district celebrating 50 years, hopefully with a victory over Pequay Valley. And folks in Fairfield are doing backflips over their Green Knights, who are 3-0 for the first time in school history. They go for an unprecedented 4-0 start tonight against Eastern. Football Friday starts now. You're watching News 8 Football Friday! Fans, fans, cheerleaders, this is News 8's Football Friday. This is the Lower Dolphin High School cheering section. News 8's Mike Straub is with the Falcons tonight. And Football Friday also at Elko High School as the Raiders celebrate their 50th anniversary and their homecoming. Pat Principe will have more from there. And I'm Mike Hostetler along with Barbara Barr in WGAL's Football Friday studios. Our crews covered 16 wow. games tonight, including our game of the week in the LL mm -hmm. League. Hemfield Penn Manor, and for a while it looked like it might be a blowout, Mike, but uh, turned out to be a really close game. Big showdown, Hemfield visiting Penn Manor. The Comets with a stingy D. Let's go out to the stadium in Millersville. Both teams with a lot of talent. Penn Manor led 27-6 at the half, dominant in the first, but Hemfield's offense begins to click in the second. Michael Edwards back from a concussion. Hits Dustin Walter, 37 yards for the score. It's 27-13 and a ball game. And then a gutsy call by the Comets. Todd Mealy, a fake punt. Charlie Bell throwing oh. it. Little too far. Black Knights take over at the Comets' 28-yard line. They've got the momentum. Edwards, third and nine. It's Will Blair. He'll tightrope down the sidelines all the way oh. to the five, setting up another TD. It's 27-20. And the defense looks like it'll come up with a big play corralling Tanner Arisman, but he escapes. Oh. Johnny Manziel, right? That, that's right. Play of the game here for Penn Manor. Finding Keegan Gamber wide open. He'll pick up 57 yards on this uh -huh. play to get momentum back, back on Penn Manor's side. A few plays later, it's the Comets, Charlie Bell. Dare I say it? Yeah, they're saved by the Bell. It's third, <laughs> oh, I know. third TD of the game. 34 to 20. Penn Manor survives the Hemfield rally. And Bell had more than 200 yards all purpose. And Arisman, 326 yards. Rowing. Wow, a lot yeah. of offense in that yeah. game. You better believe it. Let's check out Mike Straub now, who is with the Lower Dolphin Falcons. Thank you, Hossie, in here amongst the Falcons on their home turf back in Huddlestown now. The Falcon Nation behind them. The cheerleaders are here. The football team is in the house. You can tell they're celebrating. Let's see how it went down tonight against Redland. Hershey Park Stadium, the site. The Falcons trying to stay perfect this season. Opening kickoff of the game. Nate Dorwart back for the Falcons finds a seam. They barely touch him. There he goes. 95 yards for the touchdown. 7 0. LD goes in front just like that. A little bit later, how about Dalton Yanch? Takes the handoff. Not a lot of room, spins off a tackler, takes his jersey to get him down. That's a first down, just part of a powerful Falcon rushing attack. And then later on the drive, Yench breaks it outside, gets some great blocks, and he's in for the 15-yard touchdown. It's 14-0, but the story of this game and really the season so far for these Falcons, the defense. Ben Ross getting the sack there. They pitch yet another shutout. LD wins 24-0. So there it is. Three shutouts these guys have done. Three wins by shutout. All right, let's quiet down. Let's talk to these guys. Trey Clock, senior. What's happened this year, man? What's going on around here that's led to this kind of start? Uh, you know, Falcon Nation is definitely a big part of it. Um, you know, obviously, they're all here to support us tonight. Uh, but definitely just the work in the offseason we had. Uh, you know, right, right, right from January, uh, we really got to work. And, uh, you know, it feels really good to be 4-0 right now. Three of those wins by shutout. You know, that, that's kind of doing the little things, right? Take care of business, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's the type of football we play. You know, tough, physical, you know, up front. Um, you know, Coach Page does a great job preparing us each week, uh, you know, for, for the offense. So, uh, yeah, that, that defense is definitely, um, you know, our, our strong point right now, but we got to work on our offense and improve there for sure. And your dad doesn't do a bad job either. Give him a little credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Coach's son doing his thing. David Wiesner as well, another senior. So, David, man, how do you guys keep this thing going? Uh, you know, 
We have to get back at the grind this week in practice and uh, continue to improve on offense. I think our defense right now is really showing people down. Uh, the front four is called the money team. We're really, we're really uh, doing our thing, all right? Uh, yeah, I think we just need to pick it up on the offense side of the ball, take care of the little things. Uh, less penalties. Less penalties. Less penalties, more noise. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are absolutely crazy. As wild as it gets, more of these guys coming up. Back to you. History-making night here at Elko, Elko High School in Lebanon County. Elko hosting Football Friday for the first time in school history. But wait, there's more. It is also homecoming here tonight, and it's also the 50th anniversary of the first graduating class in Elko history. And to cap it all off, we needed a big performance by the Raiders football team against unbeaten Peckway Valley. Let's see how it played out. Say hello to your homecoming queen and king, Nicole Miller and Stephen Rhodes. Third quarter, Elko looking like royalty. Jeff Martin, little middle screen to Cameron Strauss, and he's got a seam, he's got blocking, he's gone. 53 yards for the touchdown. Elko is up 42 to 14. Peckway Valley will try to answer back. Hunter Smith dropping back and lofting a perfect spiral, and Michael Figueroa's got it deep in Elko territory, sets up a touchdown, Braves down 42-20. More offense now from Elko, Martin, Little quick slant to Derek Miller, takes it down to the one, sets up another touchdown, the Raiders are rolling. And then in the fourth quarter, Martin in the flat to Strauss, who's got wide open spaces, his fifth touchdown of the night. Elko grabs that elusive first win, beating Peckway Valley 55-36. Great night for the Raiders, we've got the homecoming king here. Let's hear it for the homecoming king. <laughs> Steven Rhodes. Good to, be, good to be king, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very good to be king. And, 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 the night off. and your loyal subjects behind you, you yeah. treat them well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. of course. Hey, just talk a little bit about winning for you guys on a night like tonight. With everything going on, all the hoopla, the homecoming, the 50th anniversary, did it make it more special getting the W? It was a much needed win. The fans were great tonight. That, the fans helped us win, so it was a much needed win. So. You're good. looking pretty sharp in that yeah. crown, too. We like that. The scepter's not around anywhere, though, is it? That's all right. You can save that, save that. And Cameron, the four-touchdown guy tonight, talked a little bit about, you know, getting the first win is important. What does it do for you guys going forward now, do you think? Uh, yeah, like starting off 0-3 is not what we obviously expected, but, um, you know, they say the hardest one to get is the first one. So after you get the first one, you know, we just got to keep this train rolling. Are you tired? No. No. <laughs> no. You can score another four touchdowns, right? Yeah. Congratulations, Elko. Give yourselves a hand. Great job tonight. We've got more with the Raiders coming up shortly, but now let's go back to the mothership and Mike Costetler. That is one handsome homecoming crown for the King. Back to the mid-pen, CD East and Cumberland Valley coming off their only losses of the season. Both teams were ranked in the state's top five. Our cheerleader of the night, one-year-old Zaya Mullen from Hamden Township cheering on Cumberland Valley. Second half, the Eagles are driving. On fourth and three, they go for it. Tyler Updegraff runs left, breaks it off for 14 yards inside the five. Tyler Heisey punched it in a few plays later, and the Eagles were way in front. C.D. East looking for some offense. Justice Jacobs throwing across the middle, but Logan Short steps in front for the pickoff. Eagles defense put the clamps on the Panthers all night long. Late in the fourth, C.V. puts the finishing touches on it. Zach Swenski takes one-man miss, fights his way in. Cumberland Valley wins easily 32-7. Elsewhere on the scoreboard, Hamburg quarterback Joe Kaminsky Sat out tonight. He was suspended for that helmet swinging incident against Anvil Cleona. Harrisburg loses its first game. Cocalico unbeaten as it rolls over CV. Cedarcrest now 2-2 two two after a win over Warwick. Wilson gets the 500th victory in school history easily over McCaskey. Northern Lebanon earns its first win of the year over AC. Burke's Catholic tops Columbia by 8. York Suburban in a bit of an upset, beating DeLone Catholic. Spring Grove now 3-1 after topping Kennerdale. York keeps new Northeastern winless with a big win. Central York easily over Susquehanna. York Catholic tops Hanover, and Bermudian Springs is now 4-0. And, oh. and don't forget to vote for the Good Samaritan Health Systems Play of the Week. We'll show you the plays Monday on News 8 at 530. You can cast your vote at WGAL.com, then we'll announce the winner Thursday evening. And we want to get you involved in Football Friday. At WGAL.com, go to Football Friday Live Wire, powered by Ford. 
there. You can send us scores and pictures from the game and check out scores from other contests. Also, you can send your favorite player or team a message called a shout-out. We'll show some of tonight's shout-outs a little later on Football Friday. Fairfield tries to make history. Could the Knights stay unbeaten? The highlights are next. Don't forget to look at the bottom of your screen for tonight's shout-outs. We continue in the York Adams League and the surprise team of the year, Fairfield. Last year when the Knights won late in the season, it snapped a 37-game losing streak. Tonight they took a 3-0 record into their battle with Eastern. It was the Green Knights against the Golden Knights. First quarter backed up in their own territory. Fairfield gets the ball to Nicholas Mort. He breaks right up the middle. Burns past the linebackers, heads to the sidelines. No one is going to touch him. 81 yards to open the scoring for the Green Knights. Second quarter, Eastern Yorks. Thomas Taylor back to pass. Gets a screen pass to Christian Buser, who follows his blockers into the end zone. And that's a six pointer. The Knights are on the board. Later in the quarter, Fairfield would come back. Mason Flickinger to a wide open chase. Sensney, since he was so open, he almost dropped it. And the Knights retake the lead on Eastern. Late in the half, though, Eastern gets into big play mode. Andrew Cavanaugh taking it 53 yards. Are they going to catch him? They finally get him inside the five. They would pound it in from there. Eastern then pours it on in the second half for a 34-14 to 14 win. Let's go back now to Lebanon County and check in with Pat Principe. Ah, uh, thank you, Elko cheerleaders. A little blue, gold, and white. The school colors helping us out here on Football Friday, where earlier we showed you Elko winning their LL Section 3 opener tonight over Peckway Valley. We got more from the Lancaster Lebanon League. Mannheim Central having a dominant year so far. They play their LL Section 2 opener at home tonight against Elizabethtown. And we've also got a Section 1 showdown in Mannheim Township with the Blue Streaks hosting Lancaster Catholic. <laughs> It's a whiteout and barren country, barren nation up to the task. And just a minute into the game, it's Colin Fry letting fly. Andrew Syverling wide open, 52 yards. Man, I'm Central's up quickly, 7 0. Less than 30 seconds later, E Town will fire back. The pass to Arthur Quay. He's got it behind the barren defense, off to the races. E Town ties it, 7 apiece. Still in the first quarter, Fry with a fake. He keeps it and scampers into the end zone to give Mannheim the lead back 14 to seven. And then still in the first quarter, Etown again trying to answer back, but the pass is picked off by Noah Diffenbach and he's got some moves and he's got some blocking and he's taking it back all the way for the touchdown. Mannheim Central routes Etown 55-7. The Barons are four and zero. Mannheim Township with a little bounce in their step for that section one showdown with Lancaster Catholic. Seven minutes to play in the game. Township ball. It's Matt Saladay going one way and then cutting back the other against the grain and finding the end zone. Blue Streaks are on top, 21-14. Catholic will fire back. Evan Purvis rolling and throwing. Charles Scarf stretches it across the goal line. Tie game and we're going to overtime. First OT, Catholics Nasir Weaver squeezes in from short distance. Crusaders up 28-21. Time for the streaks to answer. The rec snap to quarterback Davis Carr, who fights his way into the end zone, and we're going to double overtime. And then after a Crusader interception, it's Purvis for the field goal to win it inside the uprights. Good. Lancaster Catholic gets off the schneid, their first win of the year, 31-28 in double overtime. All right, still more to come here from Elko, but for now, let's check out Dauphin County and... Let's go to Mike Strong! Thank you very much. If you can find me in here amongst the Falcon Nation, some of the wildest, most passionate student fans in the Susquehanna Valley. Let's get to some other Mid-Bend games tonight. Undefeated Chambers 
Carter making the trip to Central Dolphin. Everybody loves the Rams at Landis Field. It was 17-6 Chambersburg at the half. Central Dolphin trying to fight their way back inside the five-yard line, and they fumble. Diamond Thomas is on it for Chambersburg. The one thing nobody ever wants to see. Ambulance on the field in the third quarter. Senior Josh Salinger, Central Dolphin, left the game and the field in an ambulance with an apparent neck injury. When the game resumes, Chambersburg has the momentum again. Ryan Martin to Darius Johnson for the touchdown. It's 23 to six, Chambersburg in front. Later though, a furious comeback from Central Dolphin. Great defense, but they come up just short. Chambersburg wins 23-20. They are 4-0. So a big thank you to these guys. Chambersburg's undefeated. You gotta wish the best for Josh Salinger tonight, hoping he's doing all right watching this tonight. These guys are wild, though. I gotta tell you. Posse, back to you. <laughs> we continue now. A wonderful side note to the Dallastown-Dover matchup tonight. Dover Player Shad Murphy has cystic fibrosis. His parents teach at Dallastown. For the past nine years, those two schools have raised more than a half million dollars to battle the disease. Congrats to both those schools for that project. Now on to the game. Fans unable to contain their excitement, and for good reason. This was a doozy. After a Dallastown fumble, Dover in close gives to Isaiah Green, who bowls his way over. Dover leads by a touchdown. Fourth quarter, Dallastown back to pass, and the Eagles' defense swarms. Brian Lehman gets the sack. Just four minutes to go in the game now. Dallas Town showing some life. Andrew Henry finds Addison Quinones in the flat. He picks up a big first down. And then a few plays later, the Wildcats on the doorstep inside the five. Henry on the keeper. Watch this effort as he fights his way in. And that was the game winner. 1917. Dallas Town rallies past Dover. Back to the scoreboard where East Penn forces four turnovers to beat the Bub Bub Bubblers. Littlestown is now 4-0 after throttling Biglerville. Milton Hershey topping Camp Hill. Gettysburg gets its first win of the year in a squeaker over Greencastle. Middlestown's Chris Holloman, 110 yards rushing in the win over Susquehanna. Susquehanna Township, no trouble with Palmyra. Mifflin County, three touchdowns better than Carlisle. Northern, easily over Big Spring. Shippensburg got all three of its touchdowns in the second half to blank West Perry. Newport, by a field goal over Juniata. Millersburg blanking Halifax. James Buchanan by 20 over Waynesboro. Tri-Valley's Hunter Harner, 155 yards and two touchdowns rushing. And Williams Valley easily over Line Mountain. Coming up next, the quarterback who has 14 touchdown tosses and zero interceptions. Tonight he faced one of the worst pass defenses in the league. We'll show you how he did. Cedars win one week ago. Could he do it again in their LL Section 2 opener against Ephrata? Let's check it out. Go Plenty to cheer about for Lebanon early in this one. Cedars first play from scrimmage. Mark Piles drops back, puts it up, looking for Jeremy De La Cruz. He's got it 50 yards down to the Ephrata 15. That duel works so well, they do it again moments later. Five yard touchdown, and Lebanon has a 7 0 advantage. Ephrata then drives back down the field on the ground, fourth and goal from the two, but the Cedar defense rises to the occasion, stuffing the Ephrata attempt. And then a couple of plays later, backed up on the two, it's Piles out in the flat for Nicholas Negro, and he's down the sideline, and say goodbye. 98 yards for the touchdown. Lebanon is up 14 to nothing. Mountaineers trying to get back into this later on and check out the run coming up here by Dakota Kiefer, number one 
in your program and in your hearts. Looks like he's down, but no, he breaks free. Looks like he's down again, breaks free. Looks like he's down again, he's still going. This was a wild one. Lebanon outlast effort of 44-42. The Cedars now three and one. Uh, back with a big drum beat for the Elko High Marching Band. They'll be back to close football Friday shortly. But now, let's head back and check out what Mike Costeller and Barbara Barr have cooking. Thank you, Prince. Barbara rejoins me uh, with an LL Joggernaut. Will Gardens by going for 14th straight regular season win tonight, visiting Donegal opening section play. The unbeaten Spartans taking on the one and two Indians. But the ground game for Donegal, potent Jared Smith, the handoff, and he'll go 13 yards for the touchdown to cap an 11 play drive. 7 0 Indians. They're threatening again. Connor Ness back to pass. He's going to look over the middle, but look at that interception. Corey Montoria had two picks on the night to thwart the drive, but Donegal again sustaining a long drive. This time, Chris Trimby on the handoff. He goes in 14-0. Indians looking to spring the upset, and the defense shut down that powerful Spartan offense on this night as Donegal upsets Gardens by 28-7 wow. in the Spartans' first ever visit to Mount Joy, and they'd probably like it to be the last. That's a 4.7 that. on the grade 8 it's, pole Richter it, scale it, there. That'll make shocker. some changes. All right, let's check in with Mike Straub now in Lower Dolphin Country. What's your favorite color? Shout it blue and white. Woo! Oh, the cheerleaders getting it done. The Falcon Nation over here getting it done. A great night in the Borough Park tonight celebrating the undefeated Falcons. Let's get to some other mid pen games, shall we? How about Steel High and Trinity? I don't think anybody saw this one coming. Shamrocks on their home turf, but it could be a long one for them. First possession for the Rollers. They find the end zone. James Warren rolls to his right, cuts back and scores. Steel High leads it 7-0. Rollers defense coming up with a big play. Mike Boguski looking for a receiver, scrambling by in time, lets it go. That's not going to work. Javon Grayer picks it off. Steel High in business. They cash it in with Warren plowing it in. His second touchdown of the game on the nice second ever. Two-point conversion makes it 15-0. Second quarter, there's that man again. Warren making it look easy, following his blockers, showing off his wheels. 31-yard touchdown and Steel High rolls big, 51 to nothing. Elsewhere, Cedarcliff hosting Hershey. And Cedarcliff leading in the third quarter by double digits and their quarterback star, Andrew Ford to Jacob Scott, hauls it in. 35-yard gain deep into Hershey territory. Three plays later, Ford keeps it himself, plowing in, known for his arm. He can get it done on the ground too. It's 34-7. And let's have some more, shall we? Ford, the Virginia Tech commit to Scott, shakes a man, cuts it back, makes it miss again, and that's see you later, 89-yard touchdown. Cedarcliff wins, 41 to 14. A great night, celebrating the victory. The Falcons go to 4-0, these guys are fired up. We had a wonderful time, Hossie, back to you. Thank you, Mike. We have an overtime thriller from the York Adams League next, so stay with us. We continue with Bishop McDevitt and Mechanicsburg. McDevitt charging into Memorial Park, looking to stay perfect, but it was the Wildcats who drew first blood. Second quarter, Keenan Huss hits Swanique Brown on the slant, and he is gone, bursting through the defenders. 54 yards, Wildcats up 7-0. But the Crusaders would respond on their next possession. Andre Robinson starts running left, cuts it back to the right, and finds plenty of open space. He runs in untouched, and McDevitt pours it on for a 43-14 victory. Red Lion at home, ready to roll against windless West York. Tough start for the Lions. Blake Cahill back to pass, picked off by Noah Townsley, and his return sets the Bulldogs up in great shape. A few plays later, West York, Ross Campbell with a shove from his teammates, gets it across, and West York is in the lead. Still first period, Cahill back to throw again. This time, will he find the right guy? No, it's picked off again. Diego Torres, is he going to score? No, Cahill shoves him out of bounds. The drive would stall for West York. Red line finally gets it going. Damian Hess with the inside handoff, takes off, squirts to the sidelines. A little stutter step high kick here. He takes it deep. 
They would punch it in moments later, and Red Lion comes back to win it 14 to seven. Thriller in the corral. Southwestern and New Oxford. Second half, New Oxford's Wesley Beans takes the carry to the right and then just finds another gear. He goes up the sidelines, but then cuts it back. Left goes 57 yards. Logan Bowman with the hustle play of the night. Hunts him down, saves the touchdown. The Colonials miss a field goal. Southwestern gets into action through the air. Tyler Sterner with a great fake to Brady Thayer. Sterner then comes right back to Thayer on the pass, who hauls it in, taking it deep into Colonial territory. Sterner caps off the drive with a touchdown pass to Brett Herzog. The Mustangs take the lead, but New Oxford would come back and win this game in overtime 24-17. Whoa! That's going to do it for Football Friday. We leave you now with the Elko Marching Band. Have a great weekend, everybody.